So the next thing we want to do is mount our fused IC socket where we're going to plug the power cord in. And it's installed like this so we have the two power terminals close to where the power input wires for the transformer are. And then we need to hook up our ground wire solidly to the chassis using its own dedicated bolt. It might be tempting to try to use one of these bolt screw holes here, but don't do it. You want to have it on its own bolt so it's got a solid connection to the chassis. So it slips in the back like this. And then we need to mark the hole where we're going to put the grounding lug. And the grounding lug looks like this. Bend it over 90 degrees and it's going to attach here on the back of the chassis like this. Except reversed. It'll be like in this direction. So we need to mark the hole where we want to put the bolt that is going to ground the chassis to our mains outlet. And what I like to do is I look at where this pin is and then come over just to the outside of the plastic straight in line with the pin that we're going to be connecting it to and mark a hole. As you see, using this little automatic punch, while it sounds like a great idea, that was six clicks and it barely put a little mark, but I want to be careful not to dent the chassis. It's going to be really hard to support it from the other side. So next we want to get our drill, and hopefully we have enough of a mark here where the drill doesn't walk. And if not, we may have to come back and use our other type punch. Start real slow until we get our little dimple started there. And now go ahead and finish. This is our pilot hole. Like that and then we'll come back with the other bit we did booger that up a little bit letting the chuck go in there probably shouldn't have been pushing down quite as hard but we can touch that up with a little flat paint and then we come in now we come in with the finished bit very light pressure down. And we got our finish hole. And then I want to come back with a another bit. Since we're doing just one. I'm just going to deburr this by hand and then come back around and do the inside of the hole. Now one thing we want to make sure we do is we come in here with a screwdriver or something. You, can't, you could use a little Dremel tool. I'm just going to use a screwdriver and remove the paint around this screw hole so that we make sure that we have a really solid connection between this ground log and the chassis because this is the safety ground where if anything goes wrong in the amp where somehow the outside of the chassis comes in contact with high voltage that it will blow the fuse or the circuit breaker to make sure that we don't have a dangerous condition where we have high voltage on the outside of the amplifier. 
So the next step here is we get a one of our little 440 Allen bolts and we bolt it down to the chassis like that with one of these K-nut star washer nuts to make sure we got a really good solid ground connection. And then we get our little Allen wrench and tighten this up. This should be honestly as tight as you think you can get it. There we go. Got a nice solid connection there. Then the next thing we do is we go ahead and install our socket. Same thing, we get we get a couple of little Allen bolts with the K nuts and bolt the socket down to the chassis. Now this one's this one over here is a little harder to get to. And what I usually do is balance the nut on my finger like that, then hold it up, and like I said, like I just did, it's real easy to drop it. Get over to the Allen bolt and roll it up into place, and then use. Allen wrench to tighten the screw into the nut. And that's the nice thing about these little K nuts is once they start getting a grip, they hold themselves and you don't have to hold the other side of them. You might have to hold it with your finger to get it to get a bite. And there we go. Okay, the next thing we're going to want to do is get a piece of green wire and run it between this terminal and this lug and then bolt this lug down to this little stud that we've put in the chassis. So we're going to get us a piece of green wire in the U.S. Green is the universal ground wire color and so we're going to stick with the colors that are correct for your country I'm not sure if you live in Europe or somewhere else what the colors might be but like I said in the US it's green so we come in here and Strip off a little longer piece, about like that. Bend it about like that, so we can hook it through here, and then we'll smash this down so we get a really good mechanical connection. Then we bend the wire at 90 degrees like that. And then it doesn't hurt to cut off a little a little extra to start with. And we're basically trying to just make a, a, a direct path from this terminal to the grounding lug. Yeah, I don't know why. Usually I'm pretty good at guessing how long these need to be, but we're not, maybe I need a, another cup of coffee this morning. There we go. That looks nice like that. So first I'm going to solder the wire onto this ground lug and I want to bend it over and get a solid mechanical connection before we solder it because in my opinion this is probably 
one of the most important connections in the amp as far as safety. We don't want any way possible for this to ever come apart. So we've bent that over like that. Our fun little alligator clip holding tool. And solder this together. sure we get a good solder joint like that and then put this over the stud might have to hook that first and then put it over the stud and we want to bend this over like that and we know we've got a really, really good solder connection there. And we're going to solder the other end of this. Like that. And then the last step is to come in and put a nut one of these K nuts on top of the other one and tighten that down to complete our ground connection and and there we go and when you're done It'll look like that. The next thing we need to deal with is we have this gray wire that we're not going to be using. And so I bent it over on itself and then I'm going to trim this back about that far. So we got a little bit of extra wire if we decide to repurpose this transformer in the future. And then We'll take a piece of heat shrink tubing and slide it over this doubled up piece of wire and then shrink the tubing down. To seal off this unused lead. On this transformer, this is really the only lead we're not going to be using. So we're going to kind of bend this over, put a little kink in it right there, and just tuck that out of the way up under there. We might even put a little spot of contact cement on there to hold this down to the chassis out of the way. But I can do that later. Next we have the two power wires. And this is the fused hot and that's the neutral, and in the U.S., the coloring convention is to use white for neutral. So we're going to stick with that. We're going to trim that off. Strip back a little of the wire. Let's use the right gauge slot. Let's trim back just a little bit more. Like that. I'm going to twist these together, bend this over, and then I'm going to tin this. Basically just means pre-soldering it just a touch. And then 
And I could probably cut this a little shorter, but I like leaving enough wire so that potentially in the future, if I decide to repurpose the transformer, there's enough wire there to do that. And I'm going to go ahead and cut this one off and strip it as well. And for now, because my switch won't be here for a couple of days, and I want to go ahead and chest this power supply up, I'm going to direct wire these to the socket because I'm going to be pulling it up on a Variac, which will I can control it being on and off with it. And then when my switch gets here, I can pull this black wire, attach it to the twisted wires that are going to go up the switch, and then hook the other end of the twisted wire up to this terminal. And even though this is a very short little run, I'm going to twist these up a little bit anyway. Because it never hurts. Actually, I'm going to twist that so the hook side's facing up. And then solder it like that. So I'm going to do the neutral first. Because this is the one that's not going to change. Okay. Let that cool off a sec. Actually, I don't really like that because I'm not soldering where I can see the wire. I'm going to flip this back over and solder it into the top. And then just hold it as it cools off. It probably was fine. But I like being able to see the wire soldered to the terminal well. Just like that. And now we're going to solder this one up here on the top, doing the same thing. So sometimes with terminals like this, I'll go ahead and put the solder on it, like that. Then I can come back with the wire, and we can reheat it up. Again, this is this one here is a temporary connection. We're going to be hooking that up to the power switch. But for now, we have our our two power leads hooked up to the IEC socket, ground wire hooked up, and all we've really got left now is to come down here on this end. We want to hook this choke wire up to this terminal here, and then have it turn 90 degrees and tie into this terminal too, just like we did on this end where we created our ground. So I hope you're enjoying the channel. If you are, please subscribe, please like the video, and we'll see you soon for more 6SQ7 fun. Have a great day.